Oh, fuck, it hurts so much. What ails you, number 12? I mean, uh, I want to say, Aaron. It's Angron, Dad. It's these damn butcher's nails. They're hurting me. Well, they do tend to do that, even to the squishiest skulls. I'm surprised you haven't killed any of the palace staff yet. That is because Lionel sends me a steady supply of Caliban Green. But I haven't had a new delivery in a few weeks now. I don't even have the patience to unpack all of that. But how about we have some ice cream? That is what creators do with their pained creations, is it not? Do you mean fathers and their children? Let's not get too hasty now, number 12. But if that is the analogy you want to use, then by all means, use it. How is your ice cream? I'm lactose intolerant. Then why the devil did you let me prepare the ice cream? Because I thought you had the non-dairy kind that Ferris gets, and you wouldn't stop ranting about your godless utopia. <laughs> you know, I'm lactose intolerant as well. And you were going to eat the ice cream? Ha! No, I wasn't. I was going to psychically project myself eating it. Oh, I see. So, the butcher's nails. That is a hardship I can only fathom, number 12. Do you know who else suffered hardship through nails? Jesus. Isn't he a movie character? Oh, what a fellow he was. Always so humble, yet paradoxically full of himself. And that doesn't remind you of anyone? But despite that, I remember our time together. He would wax poetic about loving your neighbor or some hippie shit I can't recall. I preferred good old-fashioned conquest. That's how you achieve true peace, number 12. So, do you have any dairy-free ice cream, Dad? We were such good friends in the beginning. But one day, I just had it with him. I could not stomach him or his gang of cronies anymore. Especially Peter, that ball-sucking bitch. I feel like you're about to tell me something really unhinged. We were having a supper. It was going so smoothly, except the wine was shit. But Peter chose it, so fuck it, I guess. And then John got baked lamb, and I was stuck with pot roast. I fucking loathe pot roast, number 12. Well, Ferris makes some pretty good pot roast. Shut up. Anyway, Jesus just blurts out of nowhere that this was going to be his last meal that one of us would betray him and get him crucified. Well, I took that personally. But he didn't say you were the traitor. Ah, but I was the traitor, Aaron. You see, I had a theory about my sandal-wearing compatriot. I had the strongest of hunches that he was like me, that he was a psyker. So, I went to some random priests. They gave me some silver, which I used to buy a donkey named Horus, and plotted to get Jesus arrested. But why the fuck did you do that? Do what? Why did I name him Horus? Well, there was this dream I had where I saw this ball. No, you snitch. Why did you betray Jesus? He was such a nice man. He was too nice, Aaron. Always healing the sick, raising the dead, lecturing people on how to coexist and be kind to everyone, regardless of whether they're Xenos, filth, or mutants. And he was anti-war, too. He probably could have cured these damn nails in my head. Yes, he most likely could have, but too late for that. Anyway, for a moment during the supper, I was considering cancelling my experiment. But because he had indirectly called me out, I refused to renege on the betrayal. So I allowed him to get arrested, and some objectively horrific things were done to him. I mean, I actually regretted what I had done once I saw what they did to him. For the first time in my life, I had felt... Guilt, shame, and sickness. But then they nailed him to a cross, which actually made me weep, which was strange because I didn't know I had tear ducts. But I was proven right. When he drew his last breath, he released a psychic wail that destroyed the city that had judged him and sentenced him to death. This is so fucking depressing. Finally, to ensure my getaway, I faked my own death by using Horus as my patsy. I changed identities and made my way to Greece. Little did I realize that Jesus' death would make him even more iconic. So, 
That really soured my grapes. You're such a fucking monster. Yeah, well, he got a book about him, and I got this bitchin' palace and a space empire. If I'm a monster, then I must be Godzilla. You sold him out for a theory. Yes, for a theory. A game theory. Oh, fuck you. But no, Aaron, it wasn't just that. You see, his power would only have grown more in life. He would garner more believers, which would make him better than me. I don't like competition, Aaron. I will not have it get in my way. Why are you telling me this, you petty bitch? Why, out of all of your sons, would you tell me this? Well, sheer convenience. I often think about the time I spent with that prophet of Nazareth, and it feels good to get that sin off of my chest. You just happen to be within proximity. Also, you're the only one of the Primarchs with a deteriorating brain, so it'll be easier to wipe your mind of this conversation. You bastard! Slumber number 12! And that's why I think you should utilize plastic instead of resin for that model kit. Just to be on the safe side. No, no, you're right. I think I'll save the resin for Eidolon's birthday. W what happened? Oh, hey, there he is. Good morning, sleepyhead. Ronnie, bud, you must have been exhausted. You joined the call snoring somehow. I don't remember anything from last night. I don't even remember coming back to the Conqueror. I just have this feeling of dread. Maybe it was just a bad dream. Well, you've got us, little brother. You know we won't let the bad dreams get to you. How about we watch some Dragon Ball to cheer you up? Well, okay. Can we watch the Broly movie? Of course we can, bud. <laughs>